Hello friends and fellow travelers and thank you for joining me on this 2020 Novi journey. So today's video is going to be a little bit different and to quote the gorgeous, beautiful, fabulous, wise and inspirational Hannah Louise Poston, uh, let's get into the meat of my life. Except for it's not meat, it's like a way too ripe avocado and it's not really getting into the meat of the avocado, it's just like the, the skin or the rind or the peel that's slightly moldy, so <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, um, in this video, I will be just talking about where I spent my money in 2019. And don't worry, I'm not gonna go into every last sorted detail. But before we really get into it, I do want to preface this with just a little bit of background on myself. Um, I know it seems counterintuitive since I'm here on YouTube and I have started a channel and I am inviting people to go on this journey with me, but I am a very private person. I have little to no digital, I guess, life. I don't use Facebook, I don't use Instagram, I don't use Twitter, I don't use Snapchat. Um, I do obviously have a LinkedIn and I do go on to Reddit and now I'm here on YouTube. Um, and this is because I am, like I said, private. I'm a private person. I am not comfortable talking about my finances, my mental health, my physical health. Um, and I'm sure that the fact that I don't talk about these things, that's one of the reasons that keeping all of that inside, um, I need <laughs> these coping mechanisms of food and shopping. Me just putting this information about myself out into the ether, <laughs> the internet, is so pushing my comfort zone to the limit. Um, but I'm excited about it. At the same time, like I feel like it's gonna be so cathartic when I post this video. One more thing about me, I have never budgeted in my life and I have never tracked my spending. I am almost 40 years old, so I have gone through life just spending whatever I want, whenever I want, and living paycheck to paycheck. Saving has never been a priority for me. Um, obviously my priority has been to just accumulate as much stuff as possible. So my one goal at the beginning of this year was to save $15,000. And I chose that number and that goal because I need an emergency fund. I am single, I do not have any kids, and I uh, think it's gonna stay that way for the foreseeable future. So if I lose my job or something happens, I am the only person that I have to depend on. Um, after I went through the exercise of figuring out where all my money went in 2019, my goals changed a little bit. So I'll go over those at the end of the video. When I sat down to um, start this exercise of trying to figure out where my funds in 2019 went, I decided to just guesstimate, estimate, um, set out a couple of big spending categories and places where I spent money. I knew I spent a lot of money on Amazon, Costco, um, the grocery store, and um, and then I have some other categories. You'll see it in this graph, but the categories make sense to me. They may not make sense to you, but from in my brain, they make sense. Came up with this graph. And 
Um, I'm not gonna go through all of this here. I think the most important things to point out is extra debt payoff was 0% savings, 0%. And then this huge thing right here, miscellaneous and unknown was almost 17%, which means that once I added up everything that I thought that I had spent last year, it was at 17% less than what I actually brought home, my net salary for last year, which is a pretty huge amount. I could have paid off my car, I could have paid off a tenth of my student loans, and when I realized that, um, I was feeling pretty bad about myself. I was just disappointed in myself. I could not believe that I am so reckless and negligent and delinquent and childish and just do not give a fuck about my future. Like it just made me feel sick. I, I sat with that for a week, maybe a week and a half I sat with that. And um, the fact that I have taken away all of my coping mechanisms, binge eating and binge shopping, <laughs> um, that made it even worse and anxiety was building and tension was building confided in my best friend about this who happens to be uh, my closest workmate as well and she goes jen why don't you just <laughs> pull your bank statements from last year and see where that money is and i had already thought about that and i thought you know i don't have the emotional capacity. I do not have the mental bandwidth to do all of that right now. I am just going to go with these numbers and see what happens. And I made a video about that with this first graph. Um, obviously, I didn't post it because when I was editing that video, I heard myself saying those words and I heard myself giving those excuses. And another little piece of information about me, I'm a scientist and I'm not just a scientist, um, I am a data scientist. And my job relies heavily on analyzing past data to come up with mitigation plans for the future. And I was like, Jen, if you went into your boss's office and was like, hey, Mr. Boss Man, um, so I have all this data, but I didn't really want to use it. I'm just going to give you this approximation of what I think is happening, and we're just going to run with that. How do you feel about that? I'm sure I would not have a job. And that was basically what I was, I mean, that is exactly what I was doing in my life. Like, I have created all of this data, and I was reluctant to even look at it, to even go through it and understand what was happening. And I know there was a mental block there, but when I was sitting there editing that video, I was like, fuck that, you're finishing this project, go get that data, go analyze that data, and go make a mitigation plan. <laughs> and so that's what I did over the next, and it didn't take long, it took two nights for me to go through my bank statements from last year and figure everything out. And this was the graph that, the actual graph that I came up with. I just want to highlight that my miscellaneous and unknown had uh, decreased to about 5% and that is just from like ATM withdrawals. I can't be sure where that cash went. I want to highlight that my vacation travel expenses jumped to 19% and I was pretty surprised by that. Before I did this, I kind of made the prediction that most of that miscellaneous and unknown um, money was going to be distributed amongst food, like grocery, restaurants, delivery, that kind of stuff. I know that my binge eating was extremely out of control last year. That is one of the reasons why I added junk food to my no buy list rather than trying another diet. And so far it's worked. But anyway, so I thought that most of that money was spent on food, but it was actually in vacation and travel. And then I realized, or not even realized, but 
um, understood once I went through my bank statements that I had totally forgotten to factor in a trip that I've been paying installments to a tour company um, for this year that I'm supposed to take this year. Um, so that was quite a bit of money um, and it was actually half of the vacation and travel expenses that I paid for last year. So um, once I got that figured out, you know, I felt a little bit better and I was pretty, you know, spot on for a lot of the categories. So once I had all of these numbers in front of me and just had a clear picture of how much money I was actually wasting, um, I realized that not only could I save that $15,000 emergency fund, but I could pretty much pay off my entire car this year. And then I started thinking, well, I mean, that's $25,000. If I continue this into next year, I can just put all of that to my school loans. And then I was like, well then, <laughs> I'd obviously do that the following year and the following year, and then that fourth year, my school loans would be paid off. And another thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video was my picture of my future. I fully expect to work my entire life, to not be able to retire, to never be a homeowner, and to be paying my school loans for the rest of my life. <laughs> I was being a little bit dramatic on that last one. Um, my school loans, if I were to pay minimum payment on those um, and for the entirety of the loan, it would take me another 14 years to pay them off. But all of a sudden, um, I'm on this roll and I'm doing this debt snowball thing and all of a sudden, my school loans are paid off in four years. Um, a total of five because this year I'm taking it to, um, I'm putting my money toward that emergency fund and toward paying off my car. Um, but in five years, I could potentially have my school loans paid off. And then I'm thinking, well, you know, after that's done, why don't I just take that money and just start sucking it away, sucking it away for this retirement I never thought I was gonna have. And all of a sudden, I realized that, hey, maybe if I stick to this, I could retire. <laughs> maybe when I'm 60. And then all of a sudden, this no by year really, evolved into just a training ground for me to live well below my means and to possibly retire and just start wandering the globe. And just the hope that that gave me the simple exercise of going through my finances and seeing these numbers and the hope that sprung from that, the hope that snowballed from that has, it's only been two weeks, <laughs> but I feel different. I feel, like I said, hopeful. I feel like I have a life goal when my life goal in my 20s was to be a woman who could buy whatever she wanted and live in a loft downtown. Well, okay, I did that. I did that and I was miserable. I did that and I, it was unfulfilling. And just the simple act of starting this no buy has allowed me to slow down and recalibrate my trajectory in life. It's allowed me to form these goals that are tangible while still still allow me to go on vacations and go do fun things like go to concerts and everything like that. Just not 
buying all of that auxiliary shit that I've been filling up my life with for the past 20 years. It's made me realize that I can have goals, I can have hope, I can have a retirement, I can have fun later in my life, and that I have enough stuff <laughs> and I don't need to buy any more. And I mean, I feel like I kind of feel like a new person, honestly. So to go back to the analogy of the avocado, um, me figuring out these finances and where I spent my money in 2019 and realizing that I wasn't gonna do a half-assed job on this and making myself go through my bank statements and understand how much money I was really spending, spending and wasting um, was just the skin on this avocado. And I did take out the meat and put it in a, in a bowl. Um, and I will get to that. I am acutely aware that I need to address that. And I have been delving into it and I will go into that in um, one of my later check-in videos. Um, but then I got to the seed of the avocado and that was just this hope that came from this exercise. And I'm gonna put, plant that <laughs> little seed. I'm gonna plant that little seed and I'm gonna water it and I'm gonna fertilize it and I'm going to make sure that it grows and make sure that I don't forget about it. That is going to be my new future. So that is <laughs> the end of this video. And um, thank you again for being with me on this journey. And I will see you maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. We'll see. Anyway, bye. Open up. You open up. Bitch, you won't be me and my. We should be closer than friends. Uh.